So here in the middle, we're gonna have a look at how we create a quiz. Now there are two steps to creating a quiz. One is to set up the quiz itself and the timing, the duration of the quiz, and access to the quiz. And then the second part is to actually add questions to the quiz. Now we can add those manually or we can import them from a question bank. So let's dive in and first of all, have a look at how we can create a quiz. So in the first instance, we are gonna turn on our edit mode up at the top right. Then we're gonna scroll down to our quizzes section here of this class, and we're gonna click add an activity or resource. Now, once you're in here, you will find the quiz under the activity section. If we scroll all the way down, we will find quiz or more quickly, you can just type in quiz in the search and it will pop the quiz up there and then click the quiz and then that will add that to our course. So for this quiz, we've picked the topic of Hungarian water polo and we'll paste in a description for this quiz. Now this can be displayed on the quiz page or we can display it on the course page as well. We'll leave this as is. And then the really important bit here is the timing of the quiz. So here we can enable when the quiz will open and when the quiz will close and then also the time limit in minutes or hours. So we're gonna enable this, we'll have this quiz start in March and it's gonna be available from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. And then we're gonna set a time limit to one hour and essentially what that means is that if somebody starts the quiz at nine, they'll have exactly one hour to take that quiz, but they can also start it at 9.15, 9.20, and they'll still get that one hour to take the quiz. There'll be a timer that pops up and counts down once the quiz has actually started. And then we're gonna leave this option for all open attempts to submit automatically. That means that if a student walks away from the quiz, then the quiz will be submitted automatically once they've walked away from it. We'll drop down this menu and we have in our grade categories the exams and quizzes category so we'll set that if you don't know how to set up categories then there is a video on how to do that and we can move things around our categories so if you have to leave your quiz as uncategorized in the first instance then we can always create those categories later on so it shouldn't stop you from making the quiz we will leave the grade to pass empty and we'll leave the number of attempts at one so if this was a learning quiz then we may have a limited number of attempts at it. So students could do it and keep redoing it until they reached a certain mark threshold. We'll scroll down, we have some options for the layout and we can set how many questions we can on each page. So here we're gonna have a page for every question. We have some more options here as well. And we have this free navigation option. And that essentially means that students can move forwards and backwards through the quiz. So they can quickly scan through all the questions and then come back to the start if they would like to kind of review or recover particular questions before their time has completed. And we have some options for the question behavior. So we can shuffle within the questions. We will leave that turned on. And then we have some options for how the questions behave. So whether there's deferred feedback or immediate feedback, we'll leave these as their default settings. So deferred feedback, and then under the review options, this is a really important piece. So here you can see at the moment, the quiz is set to show the marks immediately after the attempt is completed. And also students can come back and review the marks later when the quiz is still open. So within that two hour time period that we set, and then also after the quiz is closed. You may want to turn these off so that students can only see their marks after the quiz is closed. That means once the quiz is closed for everyone, then they'll be able to see their marks. If you want a little bit of more control, so that you release the marks when you're ready. You can also uncheck this as well, and then you can come back in and release the marks at a later point in time. So you have a lot of control over when the marks and any feedback on the questions or general feedback on the quiz are released. We scroll down a little more. We have some options for the appearance. We're gonna leave these as is. You can see we have the option here for live announcements. So you can actually make announcements while the quiz is happening, and so you can enable live announcements, and then you can actually send messages to students as they're taking the quiz. We will skip over the safe exam browser. I would recommend using Respondus Lockdown Browser, which is a separate setup. So you set up your quiz, and then you'll go to the Respondus Lockdown Browser dashboard to actually set that up. And then we have some extra restrictions on attempt, so you can have things like a password or a specific network address for the quiz. So for instance, if you want to have students in class to take the quiz, then you can have a password that you reveal to students who are actually sitting in the class when they take the quiz. We have some options for the overall feedback. So this would be grade threshold. So essentially between 100 and 50, you would have feedback saying, well done, you've passed the quiz, for instance. Um, and then between zero and 50, you may have a note saying, please come and chat to me. You might need to redo the quiz, depending on how you have things set up in your syllabus. 
So you can leave that general feedback, not feedback on specific questions, but feedback on the overall quiz. And then we'll skip over common module settings. With restrict access, it's not often that you actually need to set that because the timing of the quiz we've managed for the most part with this open the quiz and close the quiz timing. But for instance, if you have different groups within your class taking the quiz at different times, then you may want to have those groups have access to the quiz at different times. You could also set up a duplicate of your quiz and drop one of those grades if you wanted to. So if you have any questions about this or setting up more advanced restrictions, then please do get in touch. And then we have some options for the activity completion. So in here, we can have the student manually mark it as complete, or we can show the activity as complete when, for instance, the student has done a minimum of one attempt of the quiz. We also now have Turnitin plagiarism plugin settings in our quiz, and so we can enable those. And that means that if you have any short answer or long answer questions, then those questions we run through Turnitin similarity report. So we can turn these on for things that Turnitin is going to check against. And if you have any questions about some of the more advanced settings here, then again, please do get in touch. So here we'll hit save and display. And so now our quiz is set up to run for one hour between these times on March 15th, 2024. And now to continue to set up your quiz, you'll need to move on and have a look at the video that shows how to add questions to your quiz.